Now's the time of year where we look back and think about the year behind us. Holy shit, what was that? Hello, Champagne Dreamers! Welcome back to my channel. I'm your girl, Miss J, the trash queen of glam, geek, and gore. And for this video, I am super excited. We are going to be counting down the top 20 of 2020 beauty. So I know it's that time of year. We're getting to the end of December, the beginning of January. I don't actually know when this is going to go up. It depends on when I get my shit together. I am super excited to do a countdown of the 20 best products that I reviewed on my website, janessaj.com, in 2020. So if you're excited to hear what I've got on my list, what I reviewed, what I talked about, and a couple of things that didn't make the list that probably should have, then go ahead and stick around. We're getting into it right now. So I know that sometimes end of the year countdown lists are a little bit annoying. And with 2020, what a dumpster fire of a year this has been. So I know everybody's getting to the end of the year and it's like, let's reflect on 2020. And it's like, oh, whoop de frickin' do. I did a whole lot of nothing and sat in my house. Woo! But in addition to sitting in my house, I also did some quarantine shopping and I bought some fabulous makeup products. So I decided I was gonna go through all of my reviews that I published in 2020 and pick the 20 best products of the year. Now, I had a couple of rules for myself and that was that it doesn't have to be products that were released in 2020, they just had to be products that I reviewed in 2020. So I was using my reviews as the sort of basis. So I went back to the very first review that I did in January and then went through the whole year and looked at the products that I had reviewed and checked through those and that's how I picked my list. Here's why that's a problem. Because there were three different sets of products that would be on this list, but I never got around to reviewing them. The BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop Palettes, the Wet n Wild Hello Halo Blush Lighters, and the Glamlight Ice Cream Dreams Palette. All of those three products are absolutely in the top 20 of my beauty picks for this year, but I never got around to reviewing them, so they were disqualified. And I know, I know, it's an arbitrary rule that I made for myself, but I wanted it to be something that I had taken the time and I put in the effort to play around and do swatches and do a full review of the product before I put it on this list. So even though I would say that all three of those products absolutely should be on this list, they just had to be cut because they didn't get a full review on my site. So that means that the products in spots 18, 19, and 20 should be thanking their lucky stars that sometimes I'm a lazy bitch because they absolutely would not have been on this list if it hadn't been for me skipping those reviews. And in fact, a lot of the products would probably be in much lower spots than they are. For sure, I would say that the blush lighters and the BH Cosmetics Sweet Shop palettes would be in the top 10. So a lot of products would be a lot lower on the list. But we're going to work with the products that we have. And I have some fantastic products. So I am super excited to show you what I ranked in my top 20 of 2020 beauty, starting with number 20. In the number 20 spot, I have... The Midas Cosmetics X Smoky Glow Collab Palette. Oh shit. What happened? Um, so two shadows just fell out of it. So I do like the Midas Cosmetics eyeshadow formula. Um, and this is a beautiful palette. And this is right on trend with all of those purpley pink palettes that we saw in 2020. Like the Natasha Denona Love Palette and things like that. I can't remember if this came out this year. If it actually came out the year before and I just picked it up and finally reviewed it in 2020, but um, this is in my number 20 spot. This wouldn't have made the list. There are some quality concerns with the packaging itself. In fact, we just had to stop the camera because two of the shades, as I was opening it to show it, just like fell out. The construction is not great, but these shadows are beautiful and I've used them for a Face Friday that was really fantastic and I love these pinky purples. This Obviously, I like pinky purples, but um, this is a beautiful palette and it's still pretty good. Um, like I said, if those other ones had gotten reviews, it wouldn't have made it into the list, but I feel confident having this at number 20 and this is a fabulous palette. I don't really love Smoky Glow's content. I'm not really into like commentary drama channels, but um, if she puts out out collabs like this with brands that I'm definitely on board with. In the number
number 19 spot, I have some products that I bought when I had my failed attempt at making 2020 the year of the single shadow. I discovered a new brand that I had never ordered from before, and that was Davina Cosmetics. And although I love some of their eyeshadows... And spoiler alert, we're going to see some a little bit later. In the number 19 spot, I have the Davina Iridescent Highlighter Formula. These are beautiful iridescent duochrome highlighters. They are so gorgeous and you have a full rainbow. I absolutely am in love with Davina's formula. Their eyeshadows are amazing. Uh, if you watched my earlier video where I talked about my Black Friday shopping, uh, I'll go ahead and link that up in the cards in case you missed it. But if you did watch that, um, I talked about all the things that I bought, and the one thing that I missed out on, the thing that got away, was the Davina, the new collection that she launched over Thanksgiving. I spent Thanksgiving by myself, thanks Miss Rona, but I made myself a ham dinner and I was all full and in beautiful, lovely food coma, and I overslept, I napped on the couch, and I missed the launch. And if you know Davina, you know that their shit goes real fast. When they do a restock, you better be on it because they sell out so fast. It's such good quality. They're so reasonably priced, and I missed that new collection. But someday it will be mine, but I just missed it for the Black Friday shopping. But for number 19, I have the Iridescent Duochrome Highlighters, and I absolutely love them. I love a bright, shiny highlighter. I love to glow for the gods. I love just a ton of highlighter, obviously. And so these are absolutely perfect for the big, fabulous, wonderful looks that I do. And you can wear them a little bit lighter than I like to do, and then you can have a more kind of everyday wearable look. But these are absolutely beautiful, and they come in a huge range of beautiful colors. In spot number 18, we're going across the pond for the Beauty Bay X Ma 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 Mitchell collab palette. Was that too many ands? I can never tell. Now this palette is kind of like a book. There's two sides to it, and it's got one of these annoying, like, magnetized mirrors, sorry if I blinded you, that are in the middle. I'm just gonna take that out. I hate that sort of packaging. Urban Decay did that with the Backtalk palette, and I'm just not here for it. And in this palette that's so large, it's even more clunky, and the magnet is not strong enough. So that's kind of a pain point. That's why it wouldn't have made it into the top 20 if I had done those other reviews. But the colors in here are beautiful. And we've got this warmer, more neutral side down here where you can get all of your beautiful reds and pinks and golds and mustards. And then up here we've got a few neutrals and then we've got some greens and blues and purples. I would love for this cool tone section to get filled out a little bit more, but in terms of what's here, I absolutely love it. And this was a beautiful palette. Um, Beauty Bay is not that expensive. This was on the more expensive side because it's one of their collabs. I also have the collab palette with Nikki Tutorials, which didn't make this list. Sorry, Nikki. But these are a little bit more expensive, but they have some really reasonably priced. They're kind of like a British Morphe is sort of what they're doing. So they have these big, beautiful palettes, not super expensive. And this was really good quality. And I love the color selection. Number 17 is one of our problematic picks, and that is the Flash Highlighter Palette from Jaclyn Cosmetics. Cancelled! Unsubscribe. I know people feel all kinds of ways about Jaclyn Hill and Jaclyn Schill and all that kind of shit, and I know she really only comes on YouTube anymore if she's got something to sell or if she's trying to, like, give you her favorite things from Amazon where she just happens to be an Amazon affiliate, blah, 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 all that kind of shit. I get it. Like, she's a pain in the ass. And that lipstick launch was atrocious. But these highlighters that she did and the shimmering finishing powders are gorgeous. And I was like, that's a powder product. It's going to be hard to fuck that up. So I was like, I'm glad I left the hairy lipsticks alone. But these are fantastic. And this highlighter palette is amazing. And sorry if I blind you, but this is really reflective packaging. But look at these beautiful. These shades are like a baked formula. And they're just buttery and soft and silky. And the glow on them is so beautiful. And this one is really lovely. I hope she brings these back because these really are amazing. 
And I'm not gonna swatch everything in this video, but I feel like these deserve, like just look at that. Look at how beautiful that is. I just absolutely love it. These highlighters are the bomb. And so I absolutely am glad that I have this and that it could be number, what fucking number is it? Number 17 on my top 20 of 2020. I lose track and then I, I don't know what number it is. In the number 16 spot, now it shouldn't be a surprise to anybody that this list is going to be fairly eyeshadow heavy. Eyeshadow palettes, I think, are the most fun to review. I think they're the easiest to review, and you get the most bang for your buck. So there's going to be a lot of eyeshadow. I do have some non-eyeshadow products, but I do have a few products that are a little bit different because 2020 was supposed to be my year of single eyeshadows. And while I didn't do such a great job of actually incorporating them into my Face Friday looks or I was going to say using them for shows, but we didn't have any shows in 2020 really. Thanks, Miss Rona. And so I do have some fabulous singles. And at number 16... We have the Galaxy and Metalon Shadows by JD Glow Cosmetics. These are fantastic. I love them. Now, most of these are Galaxy Shadows. I've got a couple of Metalon Shadows in here as well. The Metalon are so metallic and beautiful. I think metallic is really going to have a moment in 2021. I'm going to have a video that's coming out very soon of my predictions of what's coming in 2021. So definitely be on the lookout for that. But I think Metallica is going to have a moment and these JD Glow Metallon shadows are absolutely gorgeous. And these Galaxy shadows are interesting, unexpected duochromes. They're just beautiful. I just love this collection. This one in particular is like a peachy pink with a green shift. That look like anything. I'm gonna maybe take some pictures of some of these shadows swatched out and include it in the video. If I do, I'll do that right now. But these are gorgeous and the shifts on these shadows are absolutely beautiful. So I will make sure that there's more JD Glow in my Face Fridays and in my general makeup use in 2021. In the number 15 spot, now, your girl likes some expensive makeup. We know this. I talked about my Karen level shopping that I did during the Sephora VIB as well as the Black Friday um, experience that I had shopping. I'll make sure both of those are linked down in the description box. But every once in a while, I do take a trip to the drugstore. I'm never going to be your full-on drugstore review channel. But when I am talking about drugstore, most of the time I'm talking about Milani. And in number 15, we have the Ludicrous Lights Highlighters. These were part of a like festival collection that came out in the spring, right when everything was starting to lock down and things were getting canceled. So, I mean, bad timing, but this collection, there were some lip products as well that were really fun, but these highlighters, and Milani highlighters in general are pretty good, but these especially were fantastic. There was like, this kind of lighter pinky one, more of like a fuchsia one, and then this blue. This is Lollapabooza. This is so beautiful. The peachy pink one was beautiful. The fuchsia one was beautiful, but this is absolutely my favorite. And Milani, if you're looking for a drugstore brand and you've never played around in the drugstore, I would say absolutely start with Milani. Most of their products are pretty good. So I really like what they're serving up and these were an absolute hit this year. In the number 14 spot, I have done a lot of reviews of the indie brand Melt. I have quite a few of their palettes, and I recently did a video where I ranked all of my Melt palettes twice. I ranked them by packaging and color story and the presentation, and then I ranked them by performance. Because unfortunately, in the past, those two things didn't always come together. Well, I'm super excited to announce that they have some palettes that have finally brought those two things together. And they are here at number 14, the Melt Loves Beetlejuice collab palettes. I used this palette, the recently deceased palette, in the Don't Drink and Drag, where I recreated a look from the owner of Melt Cosmetics. And my friend Amy D used this palette, the Waiting Room palette. 
I'll go ahead and link that up here in the cards if you want to check that out if you haven't seen it already. But they were fantastic and we got some really fabulous looks. The Waiting Room palette is a really fun collection of reds with a little bit of pink and then some shades of gray, kind of a taupey champagne shimmer, and then that deep rich black. This is a super fun color story. Now a couple of the shades in here are a little bit samey samey, I did mention that in my review, but it's still a really solid palette and the performance is wonderful. But between the two palettes, this one really is the star for me. Now I love green, I'm a green makeup whore, we know this, but I love this palette. And again, there's a little bit of samey samey in this, not as bad as the other palette, but what I love about both of these palettes is we finally get this really beautiful presentation, this packaging that is absolutely on point, and we also get really fantastic performance. Finally, thank you, Melt. The mattes are still kind of a dry formula, but they're not like crunchy and they're not, they don't feel too dry. They've got this silkiness and they blend beautifully. And these greens and purples are absolutely stunning. Matte beater juice. Matte juice. In the number 13 spot, we are once again going to be looking at indie brand Divina. They are masters of single eyeshadows and I wanted to pick one of their collections that I reviewed and I just couldn't select one. In the number 13 spot I'm giving it to three collections from Davina Cosmetics and they are the ones with candy themed names. The Sugar Drops which is these nine pans right up here all of these with the white base. The Exploders collection which is these seven right along this row here and the Candy Cakes collection, which are these six right here. And again, I will try to insert some of the images of the swatches from my reviews, but these are gorgeous. They've got these beautiful shifts. Some of them are duochrome. Some of them are even kind of edging into multi-chrome territory, and they are all absolutely guaranteed to satisfy your sweet tooth. In the number 12 spot, I've got more highlighters because I love a good highlight. And these are absolutely fantastic. And they are the highlighters from Kaleidos Cosmetics. These are wonderful. They are shimmery, they are beautiful. You can kind of sheer them out and get a lighter application or you can be like me and just be a highlighter whore and just pack it on and it is stunning. But these are wonderful. Now I do have to say that the packaging is sort of notorious for falling apart and this one did come apart. Um, I know that they have changed up the packaging a little bit. It's still in this style. But one thing that I love is that they are now magnetized. So you can take them out of these. If you don't like these little soft touch or some of them now are just like a shiny metal. If you don't like these little metal tins that they're in, you can absolutely take them out and put them into a magnetic palette, which I think is wonderful. It's versatile. They just recently released a multi-chrome highlighter, which I think is going to be interesting because highlighter and eyeshadow, not really all that different. So it's not surprising to me that this brand or other ones, I think there's one other one that started to come out that people are starting to do these sort of multi-chrome highlighters. I'm interested to play around with that. I'm not sure the color shift, like how is that going to work, but I'm intrigued and I know I love this highlighter formula, so I'm definitely going to put that on my list for 2021. Number 11 is one that I'm pretty sure wasn't released last year, but I reviewed it last year. It was sold out for a long time and it kept getting sold out when it would get restocked, but it was absolutely worth the wait. And that is the Sugar Pill Fun Size Palette. I love the Sugar Pill formula. I actually have really been liking their capsule collection. I reviewed volume one and two of the capsule collection. Those are on my website. And I actually have the, the Halloween capsule and the anniversary capsule are gonna be coming. So look for those in 2021. This palette, for being such a small size, packs a lot of punch. There are some really beautiful, bright pastel shades in here and I'm absolutely loving it. Now this one, this kind of grungy yellow is a little bit of an oddball and it's hard to figure out how to 
compare that with some of the other palettes, but that notwithstanding, the rest of these are gorgeous. And this is a beautiful shade. It's just kind of an odd tone and it doesn't always pair very well with the other shades in this palette. So I absolutely love this. If you want to try pastel brights and you want something that's going to be pigmented and give you really good payoff, definitely look into the fun size palette from Sugar Pill. All right, we've now made it to the top 10 of 2020. And we're gonna start it off with something delicious. We're gonna start it off with some cake. The Glam Light Cake Palette, to be precise. Now, as I said at the beginning, I do prefer the Ice Cream Dreams palette to this one, um, but this is still a beautiful color story. And some of these mattes are just silky and delicious, and these shimmers are absolutely gorgeous. Even colors that I don't typically gravitate towards, like carrots, this beautiful orange with gold, so pretty. This is absolutely a banger. I love what Glamlight is doing. I think their food themes are fun. I think they're different from what a lot of brands are doing. And I'm here for it. I'm not sick of it. I sat through, I don't know how many goddamn mermaid and unicorn fucking palettes. So many beachy palettes that were just neutrals and champagnes with a pop of blue. I am ready for this. This is a beautiful, almost full rainbow palette. You can kind of do a full rainbow. There's this one little green. Um, and it's like skewed rainbow colors, but I, I think it's gorgeous. And the performance is absolutely beautiful. If you've been thinking about a Glam Light palette for a while, I say pull the trigger because I have almost all of them and I have yet to be disappointed. In the number nine spot, of course we have to have some glitter, right? I love glitter. I'm obsessed with glitter. And I love this little indie brand that I discovered through a friend of mine, my friend Mary Kelly. She's the one that if you ever see me wearing the like big dramatic Swarovski lashes, Mary Kelly, the for real shop, I'll make sure I link that down below. But she is friends with the owner of the Lipstick Apocalypse. And she has these glitter gels that are absolutely gorgeous. Now, why do I like these as opposed to my Lemonhead LA? I do still love my Lemonhead LA. I think they're fantastic. But what I love about what the Lipstick Apocalypse has done is they have really interesting, beautiful combinations. So this one, I believe is called Pink Flamingo. Okay, you're gonna focus? Well, you can Oh, there we go. Finally, it focused. It's just a beautiful, like, pink, but with gold and with iridescent. And it's just an unexpected combination. And then they have this green one that has big, chunky glitter. Big, like, confetti pieces. Oh. <laughs> you hear my... Mm. Get in there. Focus. There we go. Oh, so pretty. Now, obviously, because of the big, chunky glitters, this would not typically be considered eye safe. So don't run and tell somebody that I told you to put this on your eyes. But I'm a rebel, and I do what I want. You don't know me. I do what I want. And so I love this. I've used this in several Face Friday looks, and I just am excited to see what they're going to do. I know that they are working on their packaging. They're trying to upgrade it and make it a little bit better and get some new products. So I'm excited to see what the Lipstick Apocalypse has for us in 2021. In the number eight spot, this is one that I know is not from 2020. It was a release before that, but it took me this long to get my grubby little hands on it. And that is the 9X Glow from Give Me Glow Cosmetics. This thing is like a goddamn unicorn. This beautiful, oh, squish my titty down, okay. This beautiful, excessive, huge pan highlighter palette has been sold out for what seems like ages. I have been lusting after this since I saw this on Spooky Lips and Fat Hips. She had it on her channel, and she was talking about how a lot of people think it's probably too much, but that it's worth it. And I got it, and I finally was able to try it out and review it, and I have to say I agree. These are beautiful. Now, most of them are kind of these peachy, gold, bronzy sort of shades that will work on 
everyone. Peach is such a beautiful, forgiving tone. I'm super cool toned and I can still use peach. So some things are a little bit too warm for me, like golds and bronzes and browns. But like a peach kind of toes the line where it can skew a little bit more cool or a little bit more warm or more neutral. It's so beautiful. And like this shade Halo is like that candlelight the white base with the yellow gold that's super bright. This platinum lilac is a beautiful like purple shade. I haven't seen very many like this. Maybe like Neptune by Ofra. Um, that's one of the few. Lavender Snow by Jeffree Star is maybe kind of close to that, but it's just a beautiful shade. Now, if some of these are too dark, you can absolutely use them to glow up your blush or glow up your bronzer. So these are stunning. I absolutely love this palette. Now, I did a video this past summer that was 12 black-owned makeup brands that aren't Fenty or Pat McGrath. I'll go ahead and link that up in the corner if you haven't had a chance to see that. But in that video, I also mentioned a few brands that I hadn't had a chance to try out yet. And one of those brands was so good that it actually ended up in our number seven spot. And that's the liquid lipsticks from The Lip Bar. These are amazing. And when I did that video this summer, I talked about how these were on order and they just hadn't arrived yet. Once I got them, I've been playing around with them and I absolutely love them. And Liquid Lipstick is kind of having a little bit of a moment right now. At least I hope so. I have always loved the liquid to matte, like dry down lipstick. I, it's got longevity, it's got what I need for shows, for photo shoots, all that kind of stuff. And with Miss Rona in town and having to wear masks all the time, those glosses that were becoming so popular are kind of a little bit of a problem. They get all gummed up and they stick to your mask. And so liquid lipsticks, I think they're gonna make a comeback in 2021. You mark my words. And I love the formula that the lip bar has. They dry down, they're not uncomfortable, they are beautifully matte, and they come in some really gorgeous bright colors. I absolutely love them. Now, by the way, these are gonna be featured in an upcoming video where I talk about more black owned makeup brands that aren't Fenty or Pat McGrath. That's gonna be coming soon to my channel in 2021. In the number six spot, I hope you're somewhere praying that this palette is still in stock. I'm so sorry for that. But I just had to make a big deal about number six because it is the Kesha Rose FTW palette from Kesha Rose Beauty and Hip Dot or by Hip Dot. We don't really know. It's somehow related to Hip Dot, but it's fucking amazing. Now let's be real. I'm as confused as everybody else about what the actual fuck is going on at Hip Dot. They're doing collabs with My Chemical Romance and Tapatio Hot Sauce and SpongeBob. Like, they're just shooting at everything that moves and hoping they hit something. But they did, I don't know if this is a collab. She made it sound like it was her beauty brand, but it's like, it says on the back that it's a Hip Dot brand or something. I don't really know. All I know is that this palette is stunning. The colors are gorgeous and pigmented. It's kind of an odd selection. I know that some people uh, might have to use this as a companion palette to really get the most use out of it, but all of these colors are absolutely gorgeous. I love the quality. Once I played around with this, I was like, I need to take Hip Dot a little bit more seriously. I thought they were one of those like junk brands that shows up on Instagram and just has the like private labeled palettes and they just sell the same palette under a bunch of different names. This is legit. I love this palette. So good. I love Kesha and I love her makeup. I'm here for it. I'm one of the animals. I'm one of the creepies. Whatever she's calling her people now. I am here for it. Get this palette if you can still find it. Wonderful. Number five is Lethal After Dark. In the number five spot, this is also related to my failed year of the single eyeshadow, where I showed off a bunch of things that were in my magnetic palettes. I'll go ahead and link a video up here in the cards if you want to see my video about what's in my magnetic palettes. And I talked about how one of 
the brands that people had been talking about and really talking up and saying were fantastic was Lethal Cosmetics. Now, I still haven't gotten around to swatching and reviewing and playing with those two palettes worth of single eyeshadows, but Lethal has also been releasing new shades, and they've been doing them in collections of 12 at a time and releasing them as palettes. So in the number five spot, I have the Lethal Cosmetics After Dark palette. This is such a gorgeous color story. It just absolutely reminds me of early 90s. So we're coming out of the 80s with the more saturated, bright, like true neons, neon pink and day glow green and all that kind of stuff. And we've still got some brights, but they're starting to become a little bit more pastel leaning, a little bit more muted, a little bit more skewed. And then they combine it with this sort of white and gray packaging. And this to me really speaks about what the early, early 90s were all about. So when I think of like the grungy, like the cranberries and mustard, that really starts in kind of the mid 90s. So like 1993, 94, once we really get like Kurt Cobain and Nirvana and Smells Like Teen Spirit and everybody had fucking denim overalls and they had flannels tied around their waist and all that shit. That's where I get those grungy colors, but the early 90s were all about these like pastels and like brights that weren't quite neon with this like white and gray and they're kind of muted out. I absolutely love it. The formula on these is fantastic. And this palette is so cute and it came with these stickers. I mean... Come on, get with it. Get with it. In the number four spot, I have another item from Melt Cosmetics, and this time we're gonna be talking about their lip products. I have in number four, the glitter liquid lipsticks from the Melt Loves Beetlejuice collection. Now I know that these are still pretty new to my collection. These just came out for holiday. They came out over the Black Friday weekend, but these are phenomenal. They have beautiful colors. I don't know why so many brands struggle so hard to make a liquid lipstick that's like metallic or glittery. These are fantastic. They dry down. You can press your lips together and you get even more glitter payoff. Now they do also have a staining effect and that is on purpose. So they tell you in the description it's going to go on it's going to be glittery and metallic um, when it dries. And then after you wipe it off, there's going to be like a stain left behind. So if you don't like a lip stain effect, this is maybe not for you. I didn't find it super hard to get rid of after I used it. So I wouldn't let that deter you. If you can find these, I know that this collection like sold out super fast. And I don't know that any of these are still available. But even if you see them like on Poshmark or Mercari or something like that, these are the bomb. And in 2021, I'm super excited to check out more of Melt's liquid lipstick formula. If the rest of them are as good as these, ugh, we've got some winners on our hands because these are fantastic. So good. In the number three spot, I never thought I would be saying this on any sort of video. I've never really jived with Manny MUA's content. I just, I don't, I don't know, I don't get it. I, it's not for me, like I get it. Not everything has to be for me. I'm not for everyone, everyone isn't for me. It's fine. We can just live together in peace and harmony away from each other. But even though I'm not really a fan of his content, I am a huge fan of his makeup brand. I have several of his palettes, and in the number three spot is my absolute favorite of what he's done so far, the Strawberry Dreams palette. This is gorgeous. First of all, can we just take a moment, can we just have a second to appreciate the beauty of this packaging? Look at how gorgeous that is with the beautiful iridescent moon that like sticks out. His packaging is always top notch. I loved the big drag eyes on the Life's a Drag palette. The moon spell is a beautiful like book. Oh, so gorgeous. The Eternal Eclipse is kind of a redo of this with much darker tones, but this is my favorite. This is pink and milky and there's the clouds and you get this little hint of blues and purples. So that when you open it up, you are ready for this gorgeous color story. There's so many beautiful pinks. There's this bright popsicle red. There's these more berry tones. There's these couple pops of blue. These pops of blue, people were kind of confused about why they were there. It's so smart. It's so good. Because number one, these blues are not only going to give you something to contrast to make interesting looks, 
But uh, basic first grade science, what did blue and red make? Purple. So in addition to these berry tones, you can mix this blue and this red and get more of like a true purple. You can mix the blue in with any of these to make them more blue leaning. You can use the red to make any of these berries a little bit more red. You can contrast it. It's just so many opportunities. And these shimmers are absolutely stunning. Even if I'm not a fan of Manny MUA's content, I am here for his brand and I cannot wait to see what else he does in 2021 because all of his palettes that I have so far are absolute bangers. <sighs> Plus, this smells like strawberry quick. Ah! Dying. I'm gonna have to get some strawberry quick after this. Damn it. All right, kids, are you ready for another problematic pick? In the number two spot, I have the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Blood Money Palette. Girl, what? That was weird. I don't care. I am sure there are some of you that were sure that this was going to be my number one pick. And it was so close. I love this palette. I love it. This selection of greens is everything I could have wanted from this palette. The minute I heard that he was going to have something called Blood Money, I knew it was going to be a green, roughly monochromatic palette, and I was not disappointed. This is amazing. If you like the Jeffree Star Cosmetics formula, this is as good as his best palettes. The Blood Sugar, the Blue Blood, this is the same quality, and these greens are stunning. If you saw any of my recent videos where I had that green eye look, that was done using this palette. I absolutely love it. I am in love. Now, I know a lot of people are not shopping from Jeffree Star Cosmetics, and that's fine. I understand. You do you, but you are missing out. If you love greens, this is absolutely the best green palette I have ever purchased. And if you know me, and if you've seen any of my collection stuff, if you've seen any of like my declutters on Facebook Live, any of the time where I've shown off all the palettes in my collection, you know I buy a lot of green makeup. This is bar none the best green palette I have ever owned. I love it. But how did it not get number one? Isn't that weird? That's strange. I don't get it. In the number one spot, girl, sit down, hold on to your hats. You are never going to believe this. I don't even really believe it, and I put the goddamn list together. In the number one spot, the Oma Beauty Say What Foundation. I know! I know, right? I would never have guessed. If you had told me that I was going to start a YouTube channel and make an end-of-the-year video, top 20 of 2020 video, and I was going to have a goddamn complexion product as my number one pick, girl, what? No, I would never have believed you. But this foundation, I am in love with. I'm wearing it with this look. This look is going to be available as a Face Friday look coming up. I think it actually goes live on Christmas Day, so Merry Christmas. You're welcome. But this foundation is amazing. And I think I'm finally ready to say it. I've used this enough. I think this is my favorite foundation. For the longest time, I was always saying it was my number two, that I wasn't going to let it be over the Urban Decay All Nighter. And I think that this beats the Urban Decay All Nighter. I loved it so much that over the Black Friday Cyber Monday weekend, I bought two more backups. This is already the third bottle of this foundation that I have used in 2020. I've been using a ton of it. I've been using it for so many looks, photo shoots, Face Friday posts. Um, this is my third bottle and I have two more backups. I love this. I am absolutely obsessed with this foundation. It is so beautiful. This is what I want in a matte foundation because it's not super thick and cakey because I've worn like the KVD Vegan Beauty Locket foundation and that is a matte foundation and it goes on and it gives me the coverage that I need for drag, but it's like paint. I mean, it's like putting on paint. This feels like foundation. It feels like makeup. It is so smooth and silky. It gives you this matte finish that isn't boring. It still looks like skin. You still look like a human being and not a blow-up doll. It is so, so good. So this, I did kind of cheat a little bit because I didn't technically review this. Now, I did review some other Oma products, and I mentioned the foundation, and I said how much I loved it. 
and I've used it in multiple Face Friday posts. So I decided that was good enough. That's why I didn't put the other ones in because I was like, you're kind of cheating with this one. But this one had to be number one. This was so good. If you have not tried this, if you're looking for like a matte finish, but you don't like the like super dry, crazy matte that you usually get with a lot of the thicker, cakier foundations. Now, I ain't afraid to serve up some cake face. Order up. But this is fantastic. This is so beautiful. It's such a great finish. This is the Oma Say What Foundation, the soft matte weightless finish. This is the number one product of 2020. That is the video. That is my top 20 of 2020. And again, these are things that I reviewed on JanessaJ.com in the year 2020. So some of them may not have been released in 2020. It may have taken a little bit of time for me to get my hands on them, or I may have been a little slow in reviewing. But these are things that I reviewed. I think I had over 60 to 70 products that I reviewed last year. And that's just the number of posts that I had. I didn't go in and a lot of posts will have multiple products. And so I reviewed a lot of products last year but I went through all of them and these are absolutely my top 20. I hope you like them. Let me know down below if any of these were your favorites for the year. If you love any of these. If you have any other suggestions of things that I missed. Maybe I love them too but they just didn't get a review so they didn't make it on the list. Or is there anything here that you hated? You were like oh I can't believe. I don't feel the same way. Let me know down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you think about all of this stuff. And we are at the end of this garbage fire year. Let's hope that 2021 is better. And just whatever holidays you happen to be celebrating happy happy holidays have happy times um however you can spend them be safe be sane i know we all want to get together with our family and friends but miss rona she doesn't know when to leave she does not get in the hint so be careful be safe do what you can to have a great holiday season so whatever you celebrate merry christmas happy hanukkah happy kwanzaa joyous yule you know, happy Festivus. And if you're an atheist, just have a nice fucking day. Nobody's trying to attack you. They're just trying to say have a happy day. So whatever you celebrate, I'm sure there's some that I missed. Just have beautiful, wonderful, good times with whatever holidays you have or don't have. Just have a good time. Let's enjoy ourselves. 2020 was a rough year. We deserve it. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to go down and give it a thumbs up below or you can give it a thumbs down. I'll take the engagement either way. The algorithm isn't a picky bitch and neither am I. While you're down there, don't forget that you can hit subscribe and also don't forget to hit the bell icon so you'll get notified of all future uploads. I upload at least once a week, usually on Tuesdays, and some weeks I even have a bonus video for you. Ooh, snowy. If you'd like to chat, banter, or commiserate between uploads, all of my social media will be linked down in the description box, including a link to my website, The World of Champagne, at JanessaJ.com. Thank you so much for watching. I love and appreciate all of you. Happy holidays and all the days. And until I see you again, bye.